Welcome back to my channel guys. My name is Elena and today's video is kind of a story time but it's going to be all about my addiction with marijuana. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to kind of explain how it is possible that you can get addicted to cannabis and yeah I'm just going to tell you guys the story of how <laughs> of how I got addicted to pot. Okay so I started using cannabis when I was in eighth grade. And just as a disclaimer before I even make this video, I am a huge advocate of cannabis. I support cannabis, I always will. I believe that everybody deserves safe access to cannabis. I believe in medical marijuana. There are so many things that it can help with that has been medically proven. So don't think that me making this video does not mean that I'm against cannabis. I am very much for the use of cannabis. But this is my personal story of how I got addicted to cannabis and I wanna share it in hopes that maybe it might help anybody else who is dealing with the same thing as well as just warn people that it can happen and that it does happen, okay? So let's just talk about the brain before we dive into this. Um, there is a neurotransmitter in the brain called dopamine and this neurotransmitter is released whenever we do something that is pleasurable to us, uh, something that we enjoy. And this neurotransmitter is what is in charge of our reward system. So it lets us know that what we're doing is right, it makes us feel good, it makes us feel happy, and it is the neurotransmitter that is mostly associated with addiction. Anything can make your body produce dopamine from sex to going shopping, to gambling, to food, to a television set, uh, to reading, anything that you do that you enjoy can make your body produce dopamine. When your body is producing dopamine over and over and over again, whether it be from stimulation, uh, from a drug, or from a certain experience, your body is going to get used to this feeling and it sometimes makes the brain have to work harder to produce that dopamine when that stimulation is not there anymore. So I don't want you to think that me telling you this story about me becoming addicted to cannabis means that everybody who smokes cannabis daily becomes addicted, that everybody who is a habitual cannabis user is an addict. I don't think that at all. I don't think that people become addicted to cannabis just by using it every day, but people do need to be aware that the brain chemistry does allow for you to become addicted to cannabis, just like you can become addicted to anything. So I started using cannabis in eighth grade, kind of just like um, every once in a while for fun with friends. And it was more or less like something I did just to be cool in eighth grade. I didn't really know much about it. I just knew that people were doing it, you know, and that it, it fucked you up, you know? So I was like, I'm down, let's sign me up, let's go. You know, so I started in eighth grade and it was not a habitual thing at that time. It was like, oh, let's sneak it, you know, or a party or whatever. And I, I do feel as though that is too young to begin. So let's, yeah, you know, I do want to say that. like. I started in eighth grade, but do I think that all eighth graders should be smoking weed? No, but you know, hey, do you boo boo. So I started in eighth grade and then it kind of just went through like the summer of my high school uh, or summer leading into high school and then freshman year. And then like, as you get to high school, you know that like everybody is smoking weed for the most part, you know? So it got to the point in high school where I was noticing like, hey, like I really enjoy this. I love the way this makes me feel like I love being high. And I really started noticing that it helped me deal with the anxiety feelings and the feelings of depression that I experienced on an everyday basis that I really didn't understand or know like where it was coming from, what is causing this, like why am I fucking depressed all the time? I didn't get it, you know? So when I started smoking weed and it started making me feel better, I was like, fuck yeah, like this is it, like I'm a, I love this, you know? And I started doing it every Every weekend was what started my cannabis use around my sophomore year of high school. So sophomore year, every weekend I was getting some weed and my parents didn't know about it at that time. So I was like hanging out my window, like smoking joints, like, like hiding it. You know what I mean? So it was like later in my sophomore year, my brother was being like my brother, my brother never smoked weed. So he, he's not like, he was never okay with the fact that I smoked weed. He always thought like that it was like going to hurt me and that it was like going to ruin my life and that I was a drug addict and whatnot. So one night, my parents are out, you know, and I'm out, I'm some, smoking some joints out my window. I'm like, yeah, this is great. My brother comes in and he decides to, you know, like tell on me. Um, and so that kind of like blew up everything in terms of like my cannabis use at my house and like what my parents were doing. And like, it just became like this huge thing, you know, like my parents, they already knew that I had some type of mood disorders. Like they were aware, you know, it was obvious. Um, so then once they found out that I was like using cannabis, they literally thought that like, oh my God, Elena, like we got to save your life. We have to have an intervention. Like you got to go to a therapist. You got to do all these things. 
So, you know, I was still living under their roof. They're paying for my shit, all that. <laughs> so I go to a therapist. Her name was Wendy. She was a cool bitch, you know. I liked Wendy. But Wendy, you know, wanted me to see the doctor, and the doctor wanted to give me Prozac. Okay. At that time, I had no idea about like antidepressants. What are they? What do they do to you? Like, am I really depressed? Am I just a weak ass bitch? Like, what's going on here? Um, so I started the Prozac my junior year of high school. I was still smoking weed all the time. You know, I loved weed, wasn't going to quit. And so I started the Prozac. Well, um, I took the Prozac for about six months and it literally made me want to die. Um, I was not myself. I didn't have like motivation. I felt like a zombie. Like I had some really fucked up thoughts, you know, like it was not something that I wanted to be doing. I didn't like it. So I quit it against my family's wishes, against my doctor's wishes, you know, like everybody was like, you shouldn't do that. You know, you should at least give it a try. I was like, look, I gave it a try. Fuck me up. I don't want it. So I continued with the plot thinking that, you know, this is good. This is, this is how I'm going to battle this. This is fine. You know? Um, and so that progressed all through high school and into college. So my first three years of college, I was smoking weed like a fucking fiend, like every day, every night before test, after class, like, in, you know, I'd leave class and smoke weed if I could. Like I did it all. Like I love weed. Um, and I just want to be very clear in saying that weed did not impact me through college at all. It didn't make me miss classes. It didn't make me fail classes. I did very well through college. My first three years, I made Dean's List. I, um, like I said, I finished three years with the help of cannabis. So at that time, cannabis was still helping me and it was still, you know, like helping me in terms of my life. And it wasn't, it wasn't causing any negative side effects in my life at that time. Okay. So Three years of college went by. I went through a really bad fucking breakup. A guy broke my heart. He ended up moving away from the school that we went to for three years together. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I can't stay here by myself. Like, what? I was a weak ass bitch then. And I decided to come home because I didn't want to be at school without him since he moved like two hours away. Girl. <laughs> um, anyway, so I moved home. My depression got like way worse. I was like lonely. I was sad. And I was literally smoking up like all of my money. I was smoking all the time. I didn't want to go do anything. I just was smoking a lot of weed, but I enjoyed that weed that I was smoking. So it didn't ever really occur to me that this might be a crutch and this might not be like actually helping me anymore. So I think that around that time is when I started it started becoming a little bit more of like a battle with me. Um, I knew I knew what I was doing and I kind of could see that it was starting to have like an adverse effect on me. And so when you smoke a lot of weed and your brain is being forced to produce dopamine over and over and over again every day, multiple times a day, smoking some good ass weed, you know what I'm saying? it's going to blow out those neurotransmitter production places in your brain. And not that it's not going to produce it at all or that it's going to blow it out and it ain't going to work ever, but it is going to make it so it is harder for you to produce that dopamine if you don't have that stimulation, as in like smoking the weed. So it got to the point where I was waking up in the morning and I was not feeling happy. I was not feeling good and motivated until I smoked that weed. And once I started noticing that with myself, I... I just got to the point where I was like, okay, like maybe, maybe, maybe I should take a closer look at this. I started doing a little bit more research just in terms of like the dopamine and all that shit. And I started kind of like figuring it out um, that it is very well possible that I am addicted to cannabis and that it is now causing, uh, you know, like adverse effects in me. I was smoke. And even though, you know, and this was like around, when was this? This was after I finished three years of college. I moved back home. Um, I was just trying to like figure out what I was doing with my life. And that's when I kind of just started like making sense of it. But I didn't want to give it up. I didn't feel like I could give it up. And so that kind of even made it worse with me in my mind. Like I'm not okay with being dependent upon anything. Like I am a strong ass bitch. I depend on me, whether that's for happiness, whether that's for money, whether that's for anything at all, I depend on me. So when I got to the point in my life about a year ago and I started realizing like, like this is more of like a crutch to me. Like I'm not really getting the same effects as I did in high school and at the beginning of college when I was pretty depressed and trying to like figure my shit out. And it was really helping me deal with those confusing feelings. Now I just feel as though like I'm smoking and now I'm becoming even more confused. I'm feeling even worse. I'm feeling very paranoid. I never used to get paranoid at all when I would smoke weed and then 
about a year ago, it got to the point where, man, I smoked some weed. I got fucking someone coming for me. Someone's hiding in my basement. The cops are on the way. Like, I started getting hella paranoid, okay? And I was like, what is going on? Like, this is not okay. And it started fucking me up, okay? And it just got to the point where I was like, I've got to figure some shit out. Like, I don't know if this is best for me anymore. And it was really a sad thing because... I love cannabis, I truly do. But when something is not benefiting you anymore as a human being, you really just need to like accept that and kind of just accept that and notice what it's doing to your life. And and that's what I had to do. So that's how I got addicted to cannabis is I was using it as a crutch to help my anxiety, to help my depression. Um, and I really, uh, once I got to the point where I was able to kind of handle those feelings on my own, the anxiety, the sad feelings that the anxiety made me feel, I was able to notice that I was really the one in control of that, that I was using cannabis to like help me with that, but that actually wasn't helping me with that. It was helping me cope with it, but it wasn't helping me actually become like strong enough to deal with those feelings on my own or to synthesize exactly why I'm feeling that way. There are a couple different types of depression. There's depression that is caused by your biology, that is caused by a lack of neurotransmitters in the brain, a depletion in serotonin, a depletion in norepinephrine, which are your mood regulatory neurotransmitters. Then there are the kinds of depressions and anxieties that are caused by your own thoughts. Your thoughts create neurotransmitter releases in your brain. That is science, okay? And when you are doing that, you are going to kind of do it to yourself. I know that some people don't want to hear that and that some people become very triggered when I talk like that, but you really can't argue with me because I've went through it and I have made it out to the other side to tell you that that is kind of what some depressions are. Some of it's just made up in your own mind. You have prolonged the behavior so long that you are actually stuck in that cycle. Your brain can't produce those neurotransmitters, so you are stuck in this compensation cycle where you're using something as a crutch to make yourself produce the dopamine so you feel happy, so you feel normally happy to go about your day and to do what you need to do. That's addiction. And am I saying that every person who smokes every day has an addiction? No, I'm not, okay? But when you wake up in the morning and you don't go about your day because you need to smoke weed and you don't have a debilitating condition, I'm just gonna let you know that you are probably addicted to the pot. Is that terrible? No. Is it a safer addiction than alcohol? Absolutely. Is it a safer addiction than I think antidepressants are? Absolutely. But you have to take a look at your life and ask yourself, like, is it totally benefiting me? And am I getting stronger? Am I progressing? Is my vibration being raised? Am I able to do this on my own? You know what I mean? And if all of those things are, are a yes and you feel completely fine with the fact that you know, that you're smoking cannabis every day and that you need it and that you actually feel like you need it. You know, you're leaving your house at 1 a.m. to get some weed so you have it for the morning. Shit like that. Like, that is borderline addiction. And it was impacting my life negatively, you know? And so that's, like, my story. Um, I got to the point where I realized it. Um, I was becoming more paranoid. I was becoming almost more anxious and more depressed because it just wasn't helping me the way that it used to. Um... And so I had to confront that and I decided to stop. And what I noticed after stopping for eight years of usage every single day, uh, multiple times a day, is that I became very irritable. I don't sleep until like five o'clock in the morning and that's still going on. So I've been, I quit habitually about a month ago um, and I still can't sleep good like at all. Uh, my appetite, I kind of have to force myself to eat. So my appetite is like slowly coming back. Dopamine, you know, dopamine is what controls those feelings and those behaviors. So when you take a look at it, it really does make a lot of sense. If you don't smoke weed for a day when you're used to smoking all the time and you don't get hungry, it's because your body is addicted to you producing that dopamine that's telling you to eat, that's telling you to get hungry, okay? So to see misinformation spread on the internet about cannabis, it's a little disheartening because people deserve to know the truth, you know? Not everyone's going to get addicted to cannabis, but people do need to know that it can happen. That if you are using it as a crutch, if you are using it to treat a mental illness, that that production of neurotransmitters can get to the point of overstimulation where it is not producing the normal amount on a daily basis that you need to go about your day, that you need to be a dependent human being. And, you know, there's people who suffer from debilitating pain. There's people who suffer from things that truly impact their life that 
I truly think that they need cannabis every day. There are a lot of people who suffer from depressions and anxieties that are not real, that are using cannabis as their crutch and as their reason to continue smoking it, it's helping me, blah, 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 but it's actually gonna damage you in the long run. And I hate to, you know, I know this is gonna be like a controversial thing, it's gonna be like, it's kinda like an unpopular opinion, wow, this life beams are dope, girl. But that's what it is, and that's what happened to me, and it can happen to anybody, you know? So if you're using cannabis to help your anxiety, to help your depression, to help your OCD, to help these little things, that's not bad. You know, use it. Continue to use it and to help yourself, but literally just know that it's just putting a Band-Aid over the issue. It's not actually helping you deal with it. And if you're fine with that, that's fine. You know, this is just me as a human being. Like, this is my opinion and the way I want to live my life. I don't want to be dependent upon anything to be happy. I want to wake up in the morning as happy as as. I fucking should be because that's what I deserve. And for years and years and years of my life, I was stuck in this stupid ass cycle where I thought I was depressed. I'm anxious. I need some weed. I need this. I need that. I need this. I need that. But really all I needed to do was stop being a weak ass bitch and just accept that, okay, I have a few issues, you know, but do I need anything to help me deal with that? No, I can handle it myself. And when you notice that things are not helping you anymore, do what's best for you and, and take action. You know what I mean? If you're becoming paranoid and you, you don't feel like the cannabis is helping you, then fuck it. You don't need it. You know what I mean? Like, does that mean I'm never going to smoke again? Fuck no. I smoked this past weekend. I smoked the other night. Like, I love weed. I will always smoke weed. That's just the thing. But every day, do I need it to, like, deal with my anxiety and my depression anymore? No. And I just want to let people know that if you truly think that you do, you might. You know, I'm not you and I'm not going to tell you how you feel, but I am going to tell you that you very well might be doing it to yourself and you very well might be able to pull yourself out of it. And if you know that, why not give it a try? Why not see if maybe you can? You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be real with you for a second. I feel better now than I have in the past eight years of my entire fucking life smoking weed. I love weed. It makes me feel great. But I thought I was using it to help me with my anxiety, to help me with depression, when really, what the fuck was I doing? Like, I was just a young person thinking I had issues. I don't really think I did, you know? So... Am I saying that every person that has depression, it's not real and that they just need to pull their self out of it? No. So don't put words in my mouth and don't get triggered by this video. If you're triggered by this video, you need to ask yourself why. Are you using cannabis every day? Are you making excuses for yourself? Do you need that weed Isn't the minute you wake up or to go deal with your daily things? You know, and if you do, then you need to question yourself. And if you're okay with using cannabis every day to be a normal human being, that's okay. That's your business, honey. You do that. But what I'm going to say is don't spread misleading information on the internet for people who, you know, might be using your um, outreach as, as their determining factor of if they're going to try cannabis or how they're going to help themselves. Let people know the truth that, yes, it is very... It is very possible to get addicted to cannabis. I did. It wasted a lot of my money. It wasted a lot of my time. And it kept me stuck in a cycle that I could have broke out of a long time ago. And so I want people to know that. I want people to know that you can fight your anxiety on your own. You can fight your depression on your own. And you can pull yourself the fuck out of it because you're a strong ass bitch. And you can, okay? You feel me? And that's not saying that anybody who smokes cannabis, I just have to reiterate this because I know I'm going to get this on Twitter. Like, I have to reiterate. If you smoke cannabis every day, that does not mean you're weak. That does not mean that you are using it as a crutch. I don't know you. I don't know your life. I don't know your feelings. But what I am going to say is that me personally, after eight years of using cannabis, I became addicted to it. It started having an adverse effect on me. I got started getting paranoid as fuck. On days where I didn't smoke or if I didn't have it, I didn't know what to do with my day. I was too anxious to do anything. And that's fucked up. You feel me? Like, I am ne never am I going to live my life as like a slave to a substance, no matter how much I love it, okay? I love the weed. I'm always gonna smoke that weed. But is that weed gonna live, like, live my life for me? Nah, nah, you know? So I wanted to make this video to let you know, give you just a little, you know, a little story about my addiction and how I kind of just came to the realization that it's not helping me as much as I thought it was. And for anyone else that may be a habitual user that's been using it for years and years and years and years, if your mood still isn't where you want it to be and you're having issues in your life, maybe you should 
think about everything that I just said. So I feel better than I ever have in my entire fucking life. It's great. Um, I started this raw vegan diet, which I really do think helped like, you know, go through the, the process of like quitting every day because it was hard. I'm not going to lie. Like I love pot and I don't think pot hurts people. I don't think pot kills brain cells. I don't think pot is going to like negatively affect you on its own. It's all going to be from you as a person. You know, it's you, it's your, it's you, it's all you baby. You know, so take that into consideration as well. That I don't think that I'm not blaming the pot. I'm, I'm blaming myself. I'm blaming the mentality that it put me in thinking, like me thinking that it was helping me a shitload. I fucked up, you know, I have done I'm fucked up. But it didn't, you know, so it took me like five years to realize that I really didn't need it and it was kind of keeping me stuck in this little depression fucking bubble. And now I'm out of it. And it's great and it feels fucking great. And I want everyone to know that it that, you know, you don't have to smoke pot every day if that's what you've been doing, you know give it a try, try maybe smoking once a week, try maybe just incorporating it into your meditation and just see how you feel. If you love smoking weed every day and it doesn't affect you and you're like whatever and you don't get paranoid and all that, then fine, continue to smoke. Smoke one for me while you're at it. But just know that cannabis, it is possible to get addicted to it. It increases the production of dopamine in your brain just as any pleasurable experience can. It doesn't have to be tangible. It can be a non-tangible thing, which is why people get addicted to gambling and get addicted to all these things that make you produce that dopamine in your brain. And yeah, so, you know, tell people the truth. Spread accurate information because when you don't spread accurate information, it makes the whole community look a little uneducated. Okay. And, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the story. You know, I, like I said, like I will smoke weed anytime you see me out in public and you got some good weed and you don't ask me to smoke. I'm going to be mad at you. You know what I'm saying? Like, never am I going to be like, nah, uh, I don't want to smoke. Like I will girl, let's go. But every day I don't wake up and smoke weed anymore. I wake up and do yoga. I wake up and pray. I wake up and I drink a really fucking awesome smoothie and um, I go about my day, and if I have a day of the week where I'm feeling just super stressed, like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna smoke some weed, but I'm not dependent upon it anymore, and that's how I kind of got over my cannabis dependency. I just accepted it. I realized what was going on and how it was affecting my life. And, uh, and yeah, I just, you know, I just encourage everyone to just take a look at your life, um, ask yourself questions, make sure you're doing what's best for you because that's what you fucking deserve, baby. You feel me? You deserve that, okay? If you have any other questions, leave them in the comment box below. If there's any other things that you want to see me talk about as far as a story time, definitely let me know. And I'll see you, you know, whenever I have another video for you guys. I love you. Keep it real. Just keep it real. And fuck anyone who doesn't keep it real. You don't even have the time. You feel me? You don't even have the time.